Hello friend and welcome to another unboxing and first impressions video. Today we have the Pace Wheel by Venom. This is a wheel for the PS4 which I didn't even know existed until I saw one for sale on eBay. Uh, here it is, I, I bought it new so it's never been unpackaged before. We're going to do that right now and then we're going to have a test, see if it's any good. Before we do any of that, I want to do the uh, the usual shenanigan nonsense and say that I purchased this with my own money. Uh, Venom haven't sent me this. They have no creative control over this video. All of the opinions expressed herein are my own. I've tried to go for a higher, longer shot of the unboxing today. So let me know if this is better for you. Uh, I'm doing that because the, the area of the box is so wide. I want you to be able to see what's inside. So let's just crack this open. Then maybe I'll, I'll reposition the camera when we've got uh, bits out. So here we go, it's a, it's a box. So we have our instructions here. But what we can tell from this, uh, I believe, is that the, the wheel is desk mountable. And I think this comes in uh, in pieces. We have to put this together. That would be interesting. So let's see what's in the box. We'll start down this side here. See what we've got. See, so these are, these are desk mounts. We've got some bolts in here as well. So this might even be rig mountable, which would be impressive. The clamps. The clamps are metal. <laughs> These are some good, solid desk clamps. Right, what's this? Uh, this is, uh, I'm not sure what this is. It might be part of the pedal mount, but we'll get back to that. Okay, let's go for this side. So we have another one of these that we've just got out on the other side. So I think that is part of the pedal mount. This has its own pedal plate with it, which we'll look at. Let's open the middle up. Oh, I'll have to put that back in, because that's a, clearly a spacer. So let's leave that there. Is this a box or is it a cover? It's a box. What's in the box? What's in the box? This is the wheel rim. These are the pedals. They look okay. They're, they're pedals. I can tell you already that the pedals aren't sprung the same. While we're doing this, I just want to say I bought this for about £30. I know the price is just over £100 normally, uh, but I bought this for £30 from eBay for somebody who didn't want it. This is this is the wheelbase. Here's Rosie. She's been a good girl, but she's too hot because it's summer. Jesus, you're too hot. Oh, poor Rosie. Alrighty then, so this isn't rig mountable. Uh, there's, uh, there's some pads there, and we've got a sucker at the end, which is disappointing, but like I said before, we do have clamps with this, very sturdy looking clamps. Here's the mounting point for the wheel. I don't know if they were thinking about making some sort of ecosystem, I don't think they ever did. Uh, those are, those are squishy pins. Pretty good build actually for, uh, for what it is. There's some sort of a catch here. And that adjusts the rake, the wheel. We've stood that up. So that's that's good in itself. Let's get the wheel rim and we'll see if we can attach it. See how tough that is. Okay, that took me a moment because that was still sealed. Uh, here's the wheel rim. It's quite a cool rim. It's uh, GT style. We've got buttons. Uh, we've got one analog stick here. We've got your D-pad. More buttons and you've got your share and options. Uh, that's the PS button just there. Rev LEDs here, which is interesting. I hope they work. On the back, as you can see, we've got this contact point here, and I think this has got an actual quick release, you know, which is a, a massive shame if it is a quick release wheel and uh, they never got around to making an ecosystem for it. Let's see how hard that is to mount then. So we'll put that here, line that up. I'm wriggling it, I'm jiggling it, but it's not going on. All right, I was doing it wrong. So the wheel is on. This is what we have so far. It's not a bad looking wheel. Uh, it's not force feedback, it is spring loaded. It's a bungee wheel. And because of the way this rake system works, it's very small electronics just here. Uh, because of the way the, uh, the rake system works, it's a very front heavy wheel. So yes, this will need to be mounted with those clamps. The clamps, I believe, fit here. We've got a groove here, we've got a groove here. I think this is for holding the wheel in place. I may try to put this on the rig rather than do it on the table like I would normally. As I said earlier, I was gonna have a look at putting the pedals on the pedal plate. Uh, my rig is a Trek Racer TR8, and this is the pedal plate from that. So let's have a look at the pedals. They're still sealed, and we'll see if they uh, they match up. This is the pedal set. It's uh, it's nothing spectacular, but the pedal faces are different, but they're even uh, at different heights. We've got some soft cushioning back here, so that if the pedal hits the back, you don't get a big clunk. So the accelerator, it's okay. It's actually quite firm. The brake pedal is even firmer. It's not like uh, Logitech G pedal brake firm, but it's, it's still firm. At the back here, we've got, it's that usual connector that uh, Chinese companies like to put on brakes for some reason. The cable itself is about a meter long, which is, uh, is good. Alrighty then, so I cannot mount this on this board without extra drilling. 
I'm not about to start drilling this board. What we're going to do instead is we're going to build the, um, the base board that comes with it. I don't know if it's one base board or two, we'll find out. Okay, so we've got this folding section here. Uh, we've got four screw points there, and we've got a heel plate here. On the underside, we've got these grips that we see elsewhere on here. They're not actually that grippy, but one thing we have got, which I didn't realize we we're going to have beyond this, is. Ugh, there you go, we've got a carpet gripper. The spring isn't particularly strong on it, so I don't know if that's going to be any use to us, uh, but we'll uh, we'll certainly look into that. So that's one side. The other side is very similar, but not identical. So on this side, we've got these prongs here. These are going to fit inside the side that we've already got. So what we've got now is quite a wide pedal base. Uh, we seem to have mounting options. I don't know if there's a three pedal set we can get, which is bigger. We can mount off to one side. I think you can use this basically as a small pedal plate, or you can use the whole thing. Let's just check that out. Nope, that's not how this works. <laughs> you do just have options. No, those, those holes don't line up. So you've just got options really on whether you want it here, in the middle, or off to one side. I don't know why you'd want it off to one side. As I say, unless there is a, a third pedal, pedal option, because there is a third pedal could fit there. I haven't seen one available. I don't know if they made that far. It does seem like they were working on some sort of ecosystem, but uh, I don't know. It doesn't seem to have come to anything. All right, so there we go. We're on the pedal plate. Next thing to do is try and get it onto the rig. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to do that. I don't actually think there's room for the pedals to go on the rig. There really is no way to mount it, unfortunately. That's a pity. The wheel itself lights up to let you know it's on. We've got a, the D-pad here is, is functional. And of course, we've got this, this very loose um, analog stick here. This is actually acting like a left stick. So it's not behaving like a wheel. It's behaving like the left stick. OK, so I've mounted this to the rig. And I've used the clamps. Uh, here's the clamps. And this does hold the base in place quite firmly. However, as you can see, the rake adjustment moves quite a lot. Uh, it's not really attached to anything. It flops up and down, but also it moves in and out. So that's a problem. That's a problem immediately. Holding down the mode button will move you between that controller emulation and full on wheel mode. The wheel mode is pretty accurate, actually. It's not terrible, I've got to be honest with you. This is running on PS5 right now. This isn't a PS5 wheel, though. Don't rush out and bother if you've got a PS5. I am using the Resolution 2 adapter from Brook. This is one of the wheels which is compatible with it, although this wheel itself isn't compatible with it. Um, this wheel is also made under different licenses by Blade and FR Tech. And I believe it's the FR Tech version of this wheel which is on the compatibility list for the resolution, so I can believe that all three versions of it work. The force feedback kicks in at the drop of a hat and tells you absolutely nothing. It just makes the wheel vibrate, which is a pity. Shifters are reasonably quiet, unlike the vibration, which is actually quite loud. The uh, LEDs for the revs, while they're actually being very disingenuous at the moment because they're not really showing the engine revs, they actually show you how far down you've got the accelerator pressed. Don't get me wrong, you can drive with this. You're not going to be as fast as you would be with a force feedback wheel because you're not going to get the same information, unfortunately. I mean, it's, it's comfortable. And I feel like this wheel has just along at the wrong time to be fair this whole section at the back here uh, it, it puts me in mind of the new camera c5 which uh, might not even be out yet when this video comes out but the, the c5 has a, an arm mounting structure very similar to all of this but it doesn't have the i don't want to call it quick release because it's not particularly quick but it's not a slow release either and in fact this wheel is very modular and breaks down into very small parts for transport Maybe I'll do some dailies on this, who knows? I, I'm not kidding. Maybe I'll do some dailies on it and we'll, we'll really put it through the ringer. How does that sound? Uh, maybe at some point, who knows? The paddles feel so flimsy. Uh, I'm actually afraid to, afraid to press them too hard. Maybe that's one of the things they, uh, they had in mind when they made this modular system. I feel like this is one of those wheels that came along at just the wrong time. When this wheel came out, we were just about to have the Direct Drive revolution, which was kicked off by Fnatic. Now that Direct Drive wheels are the, the new gold rush, 
in the world of sim racing, it's almost like there's no point in having wheels like this anymore. At some point, direct drives are going to be so silly cheap. Going back to the Camus C5, that's a direct drive wheelbase with about five newton meters of power, which is only 250 pounds. So, you know, that, those prices are tumbling. That means that a modular system like this, where you can actually enter an ecosystem with different plates for the pedals, different wheel rims, maybe different mounting solutions. It was a great idea at the time, but the time was wrong. Also, that's really annoying, that vibration. As my eyes are tuned to the monitor that I'm watching, I'm also seeing the brightness from the LEDs as well. I'm finding it absolutely impossible to see any buttons on the wheel. Uh, so I'm not, I'm not getting to see where anything is, in fact. Everything's turning visible because the, the buttons are black, the wheel is black, and everything on it is bright. And these LEDs are very bright themselves, which is stopping me from seeing things on the wheel. So if you're going to use this wheel, you're going to want a good backlight until you've memorized the location of every button, which feels, it feels a little bit like a, an oversight on their part. I'm sure under the lights in the design office, it looked like a good idea at the time, but uh, believe me, it's not a good idea. You can make micro corrections with it. It's certainly a lot more accurate than using a controller when you've got this in wheel mode. And it's not an uncomfortable wheel, although when my, <laughs> I'm yeah, <laughs> too many looking at my thumbs. Uh, where my thumbs are, this is quite cramped. And I am finding that I'm catching my thumbs as I release them from this. It's easier to drive like this really, but that's just not as comfortable as a normal driving position might be for my thumbs. The pace wheel from Venom punched way above its weight. It's a, a very unique design, very futuristic, officially licensed. The pedals differently stanced and differently sprung promised so much, but we know there was room for a clutch pedal, but it never came. The addition of a quick release was spicy, but unnecessary because if you haven't got other uh, wheel rims to put on it, what's the point? If you look at, at this, well, as you can see in the light there, there are more pins on here, or more contacts on here rather, than there are pins on here. So there was an ecosystem in the making that never came. The adjustable rake was innovative, to say the least. And so easy to use, but unfortunately, it introduced an area of weakness, which caused the whole thing to rattle. Does that mean it's a bad wheel? It's not. In fact, I found this quite easy to use. Massive vibration every few seconds, and not actually having the uh, the RPM shown on the LEDs was a pity. And if you've got a resolution adapter, you can still use these on a PS5. You can still purchase the pace wheel. I've seen it on Amazon for about £140. So you can still get these new. Which is great if you've got a PS4 and looking for a budget wheel. Is it a bad wheel? I'm going to say no. I'm going to say this is a great wheel. It's, it's full of flaws. It's never going to go down in history as one of those wheels which redefines sim racing. But you know what? Despite its flaws, the innovations really make up for it. They tried and then they failed. Bless it. It did its best. So what are your thoughts on the Venom Pace wheel? Let me know down below in the comments. Let me know if you've got one. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to hear if you still use it. And if this has inspired you to actually go out and buy one, then also let me know because I'd love to know what triggered that. But until next time, I'd like to say a big thank you to you for watching the video. And thank you to our sponsor Button Bashers for PCs, games, consoles and accessories. Of course, thank you to our Patreon for supporting the channel in their unique way. And to our Discord for always being there to listen to me ramble. Until next time, be good to yourselves, be good to those around you. Bye bye for now.